School bells first rang at Fairmont Heights Junior Senior High School in September 1950. The school is located at 1401 Nye Street in Capitol Heights, Maryland, right outside Northeast DC. Home to about 700 students, it was one of the first schools in Prince George's County to house black students in an upper secondary educational environment. Fairmont Heights was the first high school in Prince George's County to offer 12th grade to black students. Prior to its establishment, the only other high school in the county to house black students, Frederick Douglass High School, only went up to 11th grade. And Fairmont was built. It opened in 1950. Uh, up until the mid 70s, it, along with Douglas High School in Upper Marlboro, were the only two schools in the county that mainly black students attended. A notable aspect and rather peculiar situation arises in the spelling of the school's name. Instead of the name being spelled Fairmount, like the nearby town Fairmont Heights, it's spelled Fairmont. The U was dropped. It's believed this difference is because of an incident in 1934 when the contractor for the newly built elementary school of the area forgot the U in Fairmount. Times might have changed, but mercifully, Fairmont's zeal and the quirky spelling of its name have not. The missing U still missing after a contractor's error in 1934 when naming the Fairmont Elementary School has been enshrined ever since. This error was repeated during the construction of the high school because the contractor reviewed the details of the Erd Elementary School. This misname was never corrected and the school lived on for 67 more years as Fairmont Heights, home of the Hornets. Fairmont Heights High School has a very rich history perhaps one of the richest in the county. It started in 1950, when Fairmont Heights Junior Senior High School became the first majority black high school to be built with county funds. The significance that it has, I mean, it holds this tremendous legacy of African-American history in the county. Um, if you look back in the history books, um, Fairmont Heights was one of only two schools that African-Americans could even attend. Um, in the 50s and 60s, the other being Frederick Douglass. It served, and continues to serve, students generally in the western part of the county. Its boundaries were explicitly stated. Sheriff Road to the north, Eastern Avenue to the west, Balsam Tree Drive to the east, and Jefferson Heights Drive to the south. Because of the history of education for African American students in this county, that is what brought about the need where uh, the people in Fairmont Heights, Cedar Heights, all over the county uh, insisted that Fairmont be built. By 1960, the school's enrollment increased to more than 1,900 students, which was well over the capacity of the building. To compensate for this problem, portable classrooms were built outside the school where the overflow of students were taught. The following year, Mary McLeod Bethune Junior High School was built nearby and it housed the 7th and 8th graders who attended Fairmont, which took stress off of the school's population. The year after that, the 9th graders were also transferred to Bethune, and Fairmont Heights became a senior high school. School morale entered a decline by the end of the 1960s due to attempts to racially balance the school. Teachers were transferred to other schools, and this had a negative effect on the student body. As a result of the 1972 desegregation order, many more faculty members and students were transferred to different high schools and the curriculum was altered acutely to accommodate board requirements. The reasoning behind this was again to diversify schools throughout the county. Throughout the next couple of years, there were five attempts to permanently shut down Fairmont and send its students to surrounding schools. The community, with their wits and will, and with help from political leaders, some of which being alumni of the school, convinced the Board of Education that Fairmont Heights was a landmark for the community and must remain in its current state. Despite these hardships, Fairmont was able to retain its African-American roots and was able to persevere as a predominantly black school.